Finally, it is done. Jim's finished drawing his map and now he'll create amazing, memorable names for his world. Yeah, this mountain will be called uh, Mount Shadow Spike, and this sea will be called Deadly Waters, oh, and, and this empire will be called, uh, let me think, The Empire. Uh, what are you doing, James? Why do you just spit random names without any care for their context? I think you should take example from J.R. Tolkien. The names of his world resonate with creativity and passion. They are not overcomplicated, but also make sense within the confines of his universe. They fly comfortably through your mouth and are easy to remember. Names like Rivendell, Gondor and Rune. And yet, he never overthinks about those names because he is a scholar and he knows exactly how to create immersive names that resonate with his world. There is this online tool for creating fantasy map called Incarnate. And I remember one time when I was uh, creating my own map for my own universe uh, in, this, in this tool and it took me like 10-12 hours, something like that, in total of course, not in one sitting. And after I finished doing it, I posted it on their Reddit page, the Incarnate Reddit page, you know, for, for feedback. And the feedback was mostly very positive, but of course you had this odd comment here and there. And some of those odd comments were saying that the, the names of my location were too simple and too plain. I remember that I didn't really agree with that, but I remember that from that moment onward, I started seeing that argument that, you know, a name is too simplistic and too plain more and more on the internet. Like this meme with Tolkien, which sounds correct when you read it, but when you start thinking about it more and more, then it stops making sense. You know, okay, you think that names like Mount Doom sound stupid uh, or too simplistic or like Golden Plains, that they sound too simple. Okay, fine. Let us see the names of geographical location in our world, right? Okay. Let's take Mount Fuji from Japan. What does that mean? Fire Mountain. What about the Sahara Desert? Sahara literally means desert in Arabic. So the Sahara Desert is desert desert. What about the Eyjafjallajökull volcano in Iceland? It translates to glacier on island mountain. And yes, I took that example just to boast that I can pronounce it. You can basically take any geographical location from our world. Like you can even check your own surrounding area, your local area, and check for surrounding geographical landmarks. And you will see that those names are not, you know, so cool and amazing, like spine of the world or things like that. And contrary to the edgy lake of shadows or forest of death or things like that, simple names actually makes more sense and are far more immersive and easy to remember. So how to name your places? As much as names like Spine of the World or, you know, names like that sounds cool, do you really think that people living near this mountain range would call them that? Well, very unlikely unless it is, you know, correlated heavily with a specific culture that they are living or it has something to do with like a historical event. Usually the best way to call especially geographical landmarks is to call them in a way that would make sense for a local society to name them. Usually calling places by their significant relevance to the culture that lives nearby is actually the best and more immersive way to, to naming them, especially if you are creating a fantasy universe that would make more sense for the local culture to name a specific geographical you know, landmark rather than to be named collectively by the entire continent that way. You should also take into account that different cultures would name things differently. So for example, if you take a volcano, a volcano in a lone small island in the middle of the sea would most probably have a different name than a volcano in a deep in the mainland in the middle of a mountain range because we know from our world, from history, from how cultures develop that maritime cultures develop completely and vastly different than the cultures that develop in the highlands or in the mountains. And you need to basically remember that geography is it's everything. Geography is everything! And geography is key on how societies and cultures develop, which would heavily influence on how they would probably name something. Okay, but that's a lot of babbling around. Let's uh, take some actual steps on how to name something. So the questions that you need to ask yourself whenever you think about naming a volcano, a mountain range, a lake, or whatever you want to name, is first, what cultures developed in the area? 
are there plenty of different cultures that clash in, in this area? Maybe they live peacefully because of some kind of religion that they are a part of. If they have like a collective religion or culture, they should have the same name for this place, this geographical landmark. Uh, you need to remember that certain societies can also name things differently. So let's say people who live nearby a geographical landmark would call that landmark differently than people who for example very often visit that place. Let's say you have a port town and people who live in the port town would probably name a geographical landmark that is nearby differently than people who just arrive here they would see that landmark and they would call them differently. Just remember what their language is focused on, what do they value, how they see this geographical landmark in their own culture and in their own development. There is however one more trick which is kind of a cheat code on how to make cool sounding names without really killing your own immersion which may be very cheap in the surface and it is very often used very cheaply by different especially fant fantastical universes which is creating names in a fictional fantasy language. A lot of fantasy universes use it very often, however, there is a trick to it on how to make it work and make it feel more immersive and more interwoven into your world. If we take for example a map of Forgotten Realms, you can see a strange inconsistency in the naming scheme. There will be a lot of names and all of them will be slightly different. I used to play quite a lot of Dungeons & Dragons 3.0 and 3.5 later on, and I read quite a lot of books in the Forgotten Realms universe, so my knowledge is actually not that basic. I do know some st more stuff than the average person about the Forgotten Realms universe. So when I look at this map of Forgotten Realms, unless I read about this specific place in some kind of book, I have no idea what is this place supposed to be, what is its culture, is it human, is it elvish, we don't know. So let's take this part of the map, right? So we have this settlement here called Yulash. Is it human? Is it elven? Like, even if we go like in the Wikipedia page, it's still pretty unclear what is actually the culture of this town. We also have here some generic names that actually sounds pretty good, like for example Hillsfar or Elmwood, but then we can see Flan, we see Melvond, Tentia. Do they belong to the same culture or country? Unless I will go to their dedicated wiki page, I have absolutely no clue. Contrast this, for example, with the map of Vardenfell from Morrowind. Look at this map and the names of the settlements. Dunmer settlements have hard, elvish sounding names like Balmora, Hlaoad, Aldhun, Telmora. Imperial settlements have consistent English names or Latin sounding names like Ebonhard, Pelagiad, Caldera, right? So Dwemer ruins, on the other hand, have hard to pronounce names with very conflicting syllables and conflicting sounds. For example, Arktad or Nhurdabs. And Daedric ruins, well, they are nonsense. But they are not as hard and throaty like the Dwemer ruins, and they are very easy to pronounce once you know how to pronounce them. So with this basic knowledge, you can now look at this part of the map and easily identify all the locations. So let's look here. Wolverine Hall. Can you guess what faction it belongs to? It's Imperial, since it has English name. And since it also has the hall in the name, it's probably a single building, or in this case, it's a castle with a hall for different guilds. Next to it, we have Sadrif Mora which you can easily guess, it's a Danma settlement, because it sounds very elvish. Next, Tal Arun, Danma, Anudnabia. Sounds like nonsense, but don't have any conflicting syllables, so Daedric ruins. Now next, here we have Mzanched. Also nonsense names, but they, they sound very conflict, so it's a Dwemer ruin. Next one, Jan Siramus. Also nonsense names, no syllables conflict. Daedric Ruins. So as you can see, even though those names are just made up in a fantastical language, they do have a pattern to them. You can easily recognize which settlement and which location, what origin does it have. If for example we would be playing an RPG campaign and I would be your game master and I would tell you, uh, you actually need to go to Aldvelofi, what you will be looking for? 
Well, you're probably an elvish settlement, right? It sounds very elvish, so it's a Danma settlement. You don't need to invent an entire language for them. As long as you will stay consistent and your patterns will be repeatable, and as long as those fantastical fictional words will mean the exact same thing each time you will use them to form a name, then it will feel very natural and very immersive. Let's take Morrowind again. We have a Dunmer settlement called Telmora, which means Tower Forest. Now let's take Sadrif Mora, which means Forest of Mushrooms. So we know now that Mora means forest, and we know that Tel means tower, because Tel Mora means tower forest, forest is Mora, so Tel means tower. Now, when we look at, for example, this location, Tel Fir, what does it mean? Well, Tel is tower, and Fir? Well, this tower belongs to a powerful sorcerer named Divyat Fir, so Tower of Fir. Here, for example, we have a town named Vos, and next to it is Tel Vos. So, the tower of the town Vos. The most difficult thing here would be to invent a naming scheme, a naming pattern, which will be very specific and very consistent for this culture or this race. Like, even the same race can have a different naming patterns depending on the specific culture of the race that you are creating. The entire east coast of Vardenfell is occupied by House Telvani, a Dunmer faction of powerful Dunmer mages, and most of their settlements start with the word Tel, like previously we talked about them. Tel, Telvos, Telmora, Telfir. And that's because they built mushroom towers, which are the center of those settlements. And this naming pattern doesn't exist anywhere else in Varenfeld. No other faction of Dunmer actually use this naming scheme. You can actually go wild with this naming scheme as long as you will stay consistent with this naming pattern. And as long as, of course, you remember to write down what a specific name means so you can reuse it in a different location with a different word to create another unique name. So naming schemes and naming patterns, especially for geographical locations, uh, factions and settlements is actually quite difficult and it's hard to make a concrete list of rules that you should follow because most questions that you might have regarding this topic can be answered by, well, it depends. It depends on the culture you're creating, it depends on the race that is naming specific place, it depends on the history of your world, of this continent, of, of this culture or society that is naming this place because you need to remember that whenever something is named you should not think about naming it in terms of you as a god of this place you should think about naming it from the perspective of people who lives around and how they would call it what would be what would make the most sense for them to call it this is a very general video because it's really hard to create a very specific guide unless you want to go for like a very specific setting so uh, a guideline for naming things for this culture, for elvish names, for example, for orcish names, for for alien names, or anything like that. So, for a very general video, that's actually the most that I can create. There might have been some more general ideas that I could explore more, but I think it would be better to categorize them for a very specific niche, like Star Wars niche. Uh, as I said previously, orc naming schemes, goblin naming schemes. And I hope that you enjoyed that video, just like all of my videos. Please check all of them. <laughs> and if you enjoyed that one, I am pretty sure that you will enjoy the other videos that I've made in world building and storytelling. I try to touch upon subjects that are not talked about too much in the fiction creating community. And I hope you will have a great day.